Hi, uh, hello. This is uh, John Krasinski, Pittsburgh Soccer Now. Uh, we're a very special uh, interview here. Uh, with me is Michael Monsor. Uh, Michael is the president, I, I believe, the owner and well, he's wearing a lot of different hats. Owner, uh, president, GM, I believe, uh, for the only only one day, John. Just just one. <laughs> uh, all right. So we'll, we'll just say the jack of all trades for the newest franchise here, uh, soccer franchise here in Pittsburgh, and that is Pittsburgh City United FC. Uh, and you can see behind Michael uh, is uh, some of the really cool attire. Uh, you can see the the, the crest with this, the city, the bridges, uh, even the league UPSL um, logo as well. Michael, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are asking questions like, what's this team? What are they all about? What's going to happen? This is, you know, we've seen some uh, some of your announcements that come through um, You've had a new coach announced, Barry um, Barry Smith, a Scottish legend of sorts, and uh, and of course, uh, you announced before that um, the scouting uh, director. I let me I hope I don't um, screw this one up, but I believe it's Nic uh, Nicola um, Martini. Uh, so you yep, have you, got you have somebody from the from Scotland. You got a guy, another guy with connections from Italy. It's a lot of exciting things going on. So just maybe bring Pittsburgh soccer fans up to speed with, with everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate that. It, it's, it's nice, uh, you know, when you start and you have uh, certain objectives, you know, and a plan specifically when it came to um, what we're going to do as an organization, uh, you know, I, we talked a little bit before um, when we first talked and I resonated the idea of, I would never be interested in purchasing just a new franchise. Um, it's not for my lack of love of soccer because I love, I love the sport. It's the most beautiful game I think in the world. But at the same time, you know, I think about the parameters of owning a team and, you know, and the realities behind players committing themselves to your organization. Um, I thought about competitive edge. Uh, you know, it wasn't just a charitable aspect where I can explain in a second, but, you know, for players to come in and, where the foundation is the crest or the history of the club or something like that. With a new franchise, you don't have any of, of that. It's we're new, here we are, let's win some games and let's connect with the fans. So that effort for the fans is important. I think Oakland Roots did an excellent job uh, when they launched and had such a high attendance rate. Of course, Detroit FC, I mean, these are other divisions, but nonetheless, you can have success in that and that's great. But I think to me, per, uh, to me, not, Everything I've ever done, and I've tried to preach this to my children as well, but I also try to preach it to almost everyone in the organization has to hear it every day, but purpose is essential. Purpose is the ultimate driving force um, when it comes to creating a foundation of belief. If everyone has a purpose, then they have more than just winning as, uh, as their goal. And because of that, the distraction of performing for the crest or performing as a new team or anything like that the history of the club the individual itself does not become the primary focus if you come to our club and every player um, who is interested in our club who came in and communicated about what we were doing or didn't know you know there was two aspects it was important that i said this is why we're doing this it's important that we provide that sense of purpose because we are doing something special our fans are the soccer fans but our fans are also the healthcare workers, which some are one and the same. And Pittsburgh has one of the highest uh, healthcare worker per capita, one of the highest senior per capita in the country. Um, and what we've went through, which I've only mentioned now, I guess for the first time, uh, because it obviously gets mentioned a lot, but in relation to the pandemic and things of that nature, it really brought to the forefront um, our need and you know our universal support for healthcare workers. Having worked in healthcare for nearly two decades, working in senior living and memory care, and um, in those aspects, I, I have to say that it was incredibly important, not just that everyone was aware of this fact, but the reality of a healthcare worker. And that's the fan. And I explained this also to the players. I explained it on the invitational trial. I told them, I said, listen, we can be 0 and 20 and they will still cheer because the biggest issue that a healthcare worker has to deal with, and I dealt with this for again, uh, nearly two decades, is no matter what, 
no matter you love your children, I love my children more than anything in the world. They're the most important thing in the world to me. And at the same time, when you leave a community or a memory care or a hospital, and you've cared for somebody suffering from uh, Alzheimer's, and you realize as they decline how much they need you and how more aware and how you have to adapt and connect. Um, you grow in a sense of attachment uh, that really can't be compared. It's, it's a friendship, it's a family, it's a caregiver, and it's something so powerful. But unfortunately, the reality is, no matter what you do, on the weekend, trying to get away with your kids, going on a vacation, it's, it's just not the, it's not the same in regards to you always carry that guilt. You know, you can have everything you do, no matter how much fun you're having, you can't clear your mind like in a normal job, you know, where, you know, and without thinking about the fact that you need to be there. So that's the foundation I was very aware of outside of soccer. It was a foundation that I had worked with as an executive, um, you know, and, and in different facets, working the floors on memory care units on late night shifts. I mean, I've seen this, I've experienced it. And that was, that was going to be, and I, I called, um, at the time, I think it was Vice President uh, Christian Blayos, and I said, listen, I'm interested in buying a franchise under one condition. And that condition is, I want to get a sponsorship from the Alzheimer's Association, where we put their jersey on the front of the jersey. I want to give half the profits. I want to turn our team into specific mandates where when we go to a game, for example, we're not going in jerseys into senior living communities for an hour to volunteer. We're going in street clothes. It, this is not about... Um, us pushing the brand as the sole, you know, proprietors in a way of this of this vision. You know, I want everyone to eventually adapt and see this. But at the same time, um, I explained to you know, so I explained to Christian. I said, so I want to do something different. I, I think that that they deserve it, and if I can just remove that guilt from a single fan for ninety minutes, that is so powerful. And that would mean so much because when you come to our game and you, you purchase a ticket, you're committing to the Alzheimer's you know, so association. That that is, you you know that that you know the half of that profit is going to the association. If you buy a jersey, half of that profit is going to the association. Hats, merchandise, etc. So that's important. But even in my conversations recently with the association, I was talking to uh, Matthew Sousa, and he brought something to light that was that was I was happy to hear. And he said it's the awareness. It, it, that's what we're excited about. You know, we're seeing Alzheimer's Association logos on Marvel jerseys. You know, we're seeing this, um, you know, starting to take flight and we're seeing this commitment. You know, Barry Smith will, when, uh, met, when Coach Smith called me um, and he reached out to us. I get a lot of credit, uh, I think early on, or at least credit with the question mark, right? Until we kick a ball. But in regards to who I've been able to bring in from a GM perspective, um, I think when you have a, a valid story and you have this type of approach and it's new, but it, you feel like it shouldn't be new, you feel like this should, this our team should have been doing this, you know, oh, hey, let's not be a new franchise. Let's, let's find something that is our foundation. Let's, let's, we are the healthcare workers soccer team. We are there for them. We're going to fight for them. And, you know, and that was to have someone connect with me, to resonate that just on, you know, the relatively limited information that's online um i'll let coach smith when he gives his announcement uh express what he said and why but it meant the world to me it meant the absolute world to me um you do tend to not lose faith um i think pandemic helped a lot and kind of regain that but you it's you get i guess you don't lose faith in the person you lose faith in the time that it takes and for someone to understand what you're doing and the process and you know, we are, you know, you, you have marketing that is coming from sports teams that do incredible things, by the way. We didn't invent charity in sports. There, I, there's just, you know, that obviously that's not a reality. Right. But, it's the, um, uh, you're actually turning the tables the other way around. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. organizations have been doing a lot of great things, but now you're, yeah. turn, you're, you're actually saying we're, we are representing some cause related yeah. initiatives and it's not just Alzheimer's. You're, you're also going to bat and try um for yes, yeah the to, to promote the safe. fact that we want safer um you know safer environment for, for soccer players yeah. preventing yeah. concussions um so we i know you 
you, you've spoken about that quite a bit already too and the initial press conference and whatnot. I, yep, I have. And one thing I did not uh, discuss in the press conference, so I'll give you, a, I guess, a you know, little bit of a breaking news aspect, but it was important that we set the right pieces together and we are still in the process. We have some excellent um, physicians and uh, neurosurgeons, et cetera. But when I, try, when I look at an issue, like why are players not wearing this headgear? And, you know, you can see the photos online. People, I think, when they think headgear, the players are running out in uh, giant space, you know, space balls helmets or something you know what i mean and it's, it's not like that at all practically like a bandana but the study is out there i mean full 90 you know did that case study it reduced uh, concussions three to one it was in the uh, published in the british uh, sports journal of medicine but it wasn't enough uh for fifa i think it may have been enough i you know, I could have the times crossed but maybe that could have been the influence on u.s soccer creating the mandate that uh soccer players tend to under can head but um i have to be honest with you, it was interesting because i said okay well what's missing and what was missing was a professional, you know, structure similar to, for example, Premier League or things of that nature, and a case study that related to that particular structure. Well, we have an excellent opportunity. We are mandating headgear. Um, again, you know, I can go into in a second uh, the reactions I got from some people <laughs> in the industry who said we wouldn't get any players. Well, that turned out to be very, very wrong. Um, but at the same time, uh, we have the opportunity for these players over two seasons. Uh, to accumulate a case study that's going to be very hard to ignore. And if that helps players just that much more, um, you know, that's that's great. And I, one thing I think Barry wouldn't mind me saying was part of that drive, you know, in, in calling me was Scotland's lost some great players, um, so, you know, some incredible players. And, um, and he expressed that to me uh, because of Alzheimer's and because this subconcussive reality, which is happening, when you head the ball, it's almost, it's like a subconcussion. You do it over and over and over again. Uh, you're going to have a hard time and you don't want to put yourself in a stage where you have similar, um, you're in a similar situation uh, as somebody with Alzheimer's at a much earlier age, uh, which is starting to happen. So they're seeing across, uh, across you know these uh, veteran players in europe so that was a huge aspect and barry had played over 500 games you know so that was also an aspect that really connected with him and i i'm overwhelmingly humbled um i know that you know without sounding cliche i i am a very am ambitious person when it comes to what i the potential of the human condition i i believe that that people are capable of really connecting with something so that's a huge factor for me but this is humbling beyond my highest expectations and it's created an opportunity for us to be able to be very consistent and precise in what we do uh, because we do want to win um, and as long as people are out there trying to win and and feeling sometimes that they're you know in a losing battle when it comes to alzheimer's or it comes to the concussion issue um, they all, they're going to know that there's a team that's not losing, you know, when it comes to spreading awareness and connecting, you know, we're, we're there for them. We're winning for them. And, and that sponsorship and what we do will never change. Um, it won't yeah. change until there's a. And I think that the forum of having it at, you know, home soccer matches throughout the course of a season. Um, I know it's an abbreviated season. Maybe we, if we can kind of go over real quickly. Yeah the logistics of how this is going to work so we're we're looking at a probably like a two-month run in terms of a season or if that but you know maybe set up pittsburgh soccer fans what what should they expect you know when does a team get together begins training what type of schedule uh, and really what what's what are things going to look like along those lines yeah uh, that's an excellent question um so the schedule itself has not been released uh, from UPSL, but it's coming soon. Uh, we know that we are going to be in a division um, that I think the Pittsburgh fans are going to be very excited about. Um, I, I can say this uh, just out of respect for the UPSL, you know what I mean, in regards to, you know, they have not technically released the division unless it happened an hour ago. We've been working, you know, nonstop here, so we haven't been able to check on the updates. But um, it's a division that will consist, I believe, of teams from Ohio. Um, and uh, to be able to kind of drive that competitive rivalry, um, which is great. I, I don't know where they go beyond that, if it's Michigan or um, if we go over to Maryland or somewhere like that. It's, I think it's the, the structure with UPSL is 10 regular uh, season games. So you have 10 regular season games, five home, five away. Then you okay. have two playoff games. Yeah. And then you have the two playoff games 
which are considered, I believe, divisional games. And then it goes to the round of 32. And the round of 32 is for the National Cup. So round of 32 is pretty much the same structure, except I don't believe it's home in a ways. Uh, if it is, that'd be wonderful. We'd love to play more games. But once you get to the point of the National Cup, we all, the, our players, and I know our manager, they, there's more games, you know, it's, that's how it is. But um, when you get to the National Cup, I believe you're at 18 or uh, 19 games. But what I love that the UPSL did uh, that I don't, I can't find a comparison anywhere else is they actually expanded into Mexico. So UPSL and X. I so did see that. that. Yeah. And it's brilliant because, um, yeah. you know, they had four teams and, um, I, I played my, my soccer's in the parks in San Miguel Allende in the summers because my grandparents lived down there. So just the idea of potentially playing San Miguel in a championship is, is probably going to be the first personal thing. <laughs> personal you know, aspect is everything is so about the, you know, about our organization and what we're doing. But it will bring it will bring a few tears to my eyes. Um, but uh, yeah, with that said, there I believe there's a home and away. So the top two teams, so the fall winner, which we hope you know that, that we are. Um, I will talk about my respect for the competition, especially down south too, because UPSL has some serious, serious players. If you do the research and you go down specifically, sees the Jamaica, uh, you know, um, I think it's Atlanta. Uh, Atletico Atlanta or other teams like that. These are these are high caliber teams with really really strong rosters, even in Virginia. So it's a lot. Of, it's very competitive. But with that said, um, the top two teams, the fall and spring champion in the U.S., play the fall and spring champion in Mexico, and um, of course uh, there's a winner. So we kind of have our own concafa for Division Four, and I, I did. I tipped my hat to them. I think that's brilliant. So it creates a 21 game season. So it's funny because when you describe the regular season, it feels like, ah, oh, it's so quick, it's so short. But if you look at the whole scope of it, it we're supposed to start uh, roughly the last week of August and last week of August to first week of September. So regular season games, like for example, what most likely gonna be our last home finale game, but uh, October 16th for the Alzheimer's walk. Uh, right. we're, there, we're there at the walk, you know I mean? We're participating in the walk and then we are going to, as a celebration of them, play our hearts out. Um, so that's you. That's most likely going to be the ninth or tenth game of the season, at least from what I'm what I'm seeing and projecting. That means that you go and into division. From my understanding, it, is it set for Highmark Stadium, or is that still being worked out? It, that, yes. Yeah. Though that's been worked out. Yeah. Highmark Stadium has been worked out, and um, we're, fortunately, we're very because of our limited amount of home games, we've been very uh, flexible um, in dis in our discussions with Highmark in trying to work with that time. Because uh, you know, again, as as I had mentioned them. Um, and it's been a couple months uh, in communicating with them, but I just think it's imperative. I mean, it, right now it's the, uh, no disrespect if there's another soccer field, but I've definitely looked at, it seems like the premier soccer field, uh, you know what I mean, in Pittsburgh. And sure. uh, for our team and for what we're doing, I mean, our Marvel game, which is halfway through the year, you know, I mean, it's, there's things they were planning on doing that really adhere to that type of visual element for the, for the fans to feel connected. I love the Riverhound Stadium, that feeling of be, being like right on the field, you know, the PNC Park feeling, you know, that kind of thing. That's that's imperative when you have such a strong connective message that we have. You know, they, they will connect to our players and hopefully they feel like they just reach out and touch them. So, yeah, High, Highmark is, is, um, is not just the goal. It's in a lot of ways our internal mandate. You know, we have to play at Highmark. Um, it would be a tragedy if we uh, if we weren't able to work out the schedule and we had to play you know, at a stadium with football field lines. There's no disrespect to it. I, I told by you, going with that, yeah, I, I hate that. I absolutely, soccer, I don't. <laughs> true soccer fan, you know, especially we've been, you know, since the Highmark Stadium has been built, especially, I think everyone that loves the game in this area feels, suddenly feels that way. I think for years and years and years, we kind of accepted the fact that, oh, we, we can, we'll just deal with these football lines. But I, I think we're, we've moved well past that now. And uh, the, the standards are, are much higher yeah. and I'm yeah. just glad that everyone feels that way. I, it's just, it's great. Oh. So, and <laughs> even when we watch college games now, it's like, if it's a college game on football lines, it's just not right. You know? So I, I, I get nauseous. I'm not going to lie. I, I actually get like a car sickness when I see it. Um, <laughs> it's it true. And you know, it's funny because one aspect in how we're getting, uh, you know, people interested when you call me and you tell me, that you're interested and and you know and we get engaged in the process i want to be hyper transparent and honest that's how you earn the respect of a player you respect and understand their culture you respect where they're coming from 
and then you respect their belief that they're going to get it. And sometimes, you know, they might not. We haven't experienced it yet, but I'm sure it'll happen. But, you know, it's important to be incredibly honest. So I will tell you the story. So when Coach Smith, you know, had uh, said, you know, his, you know, he had agreed and wanted to be a part of the team, the first thing I said was, okay, excellent. I mean, it's a huge honor. I held back back my own, you know, fanboy tears. Um, but uh, what, we did, what we did was, I, I had to be honest. I said, listen, Coach Smith, we're going to go to away games. And sometimes they can't get the field. And we might be playing in high school football fields, you know, for away games, which is surreal when you think about, again, the level of talent. And I think there's, yeah, there's an owner who owns an Italian club uh, in Miami, I believe. And he had bought the UPSL. I mean, it's surreal that it's not like a complete mandate, but I also understand why it's not a mandate. I mean, you know, I think Pittsburgh should have another soccer stadium, to be honest with you. It'd be great. Um, you know, but that's, that's happening. It's trending. You know what I mean? Uh, first five weeks, I think I read a report recently. First five weeks of uh, TV viewership is the highest, I believe, up by 30% for soccer. ESPN just purchased a $1.4 billion 12-year deal um, with, with La Liga for rights. I always say, you, you want to know where the market's trending? Follow ESPN. It's 100%. <laughs> and uh, so the point is, you know, more fields and soccer fields, specific fields, you know, should, should uh, be developed. And I do understand the mandates. I really do understand the USL mandate. Um, and I understand the MLS's mandate. I actually do. I, I may not 100% understand the MLS's franchise fee. Um, what is it, 350 million now, <laughs> right. or something of that nature? Um, you know, it, but at the same time, if it's any, any indication of the market, then, you know, cities and even fans and, you know, that people are fair weather or neutral fans, by the way. And I think that's one thing that hasn't happened. That's the bridge that will bring the Pittsburgh fan is that once you realize that in soccer, a neutral fan or the fair weather fan is huge and significant and not disrespected. It's an actual thing. They call you a neutral, you know, yeah. and, and you're still a part of it. You're still welcomed, you know, uh, that's so I, I do. I think that, you know, it's just, it's all coming together at the right time. We're very fortunate uh, that we're in an opportunity at the same time with fortune because, you know, there's reality as well. And the reality is we have a significant, um, a significant roster in regards to talent. And we've had players, for example, who chose, who chose, and this is going to sound unbelievable until the press conference uh, happens, but we have one player, let's just say this, uh, choose us over a division one team in France. We have another player who is a division one captain in China, uh, who's uh, from Nigeria. We have another player who played in the Concafa at like 17 years old. For his, uh, you know, for his team, um, we have national players, you know, from um, Ghana. We have players who have played in the Division Two here in the United States, and it is a mix of incredibly young, brilliant, talented future stars and a mix of uh, veterans who just want to believe in something, you know. But the pressures of that is is important because, as you can imagine, in Division Four, you you have to. Uh, create an environment for them where they can flourish because you can't pay them and you can't go on a contract, you know, things like that. And it becomes very difficult. Um, and you want to be able to help and compensate them. But the reality is, you know, you have to follow the rules. And that's very important to us because, again, we're, we're, I always said we're not going to give anybody anything um, to distract on what we're doing. You know, that, that that's that's just it, ridiculous and even because we're new to this you know i know business and i i understand i think the consumer and i love soccer that does not mean that uh i am the expert of all contracts you know what i mean or things of that nature that's legal that's thing you know and that's fun play, and we want it we want to do this right so that's what makes the roster so competitive i look forward to um i look forward to the fans seeing just what that means because these players are coming from a long way away and they're coming to represent a crest that's more than a soccer team so i think that's that's something I was not expecting, to be honest with you, in the first uh, six to 12 months, let alone the first six weeks. So it's well, a lot of work. <laughs> it, sound, it sounds to me like if, you, if anyone has listened to the, much of what you've said uh, during the course of this interview, the way I sum it up is I see opportunity for you know, increased awareness for Alzheimer's, increased awareness for concussion protocols and and head head safety and sports and you know these are opportunities that 
you're taking to a wider forum and then opportunities for soccer to grow in our area. And I look at it as opportunity for these players that you're talking about to come to the United States and, and make their mark where it's very interesting because in the United States, you know, the USL level, even league one now, I'm sorry, league, yeah, league one or USL championship guys that come in from other countries, sometimes it's, it's, it's a break for them. It's actually a big deal to get onto the stage yeah. or guys that have come through internationally through colleges and then get to play in the United States and go on to other opportunities. You know, we've seen so many different types of opportunities like that here uh, locally. You know, I look at, I look at Robbie Vincent who excelled for the Riverhounds uh, came through, you know, played through the Everton Academy system as a youngster, but ended up, you know, coming to college here and got a kind of second second chance as an as an adult as a postgraduate to play professionally here in the United States not only in the USL level but also to move up to MLS so opportunities abound i think that's the, that's probably one of your biggest selling tools is to get even though the United States soccer is not maybe where some other countries are i think there's still lots of opportunities and there's so much growth for opportunities. So your franchise, I think, represents that on many levels. And, you know, we talked about lack of soccer specific fields in our area. But again, with if you see we the fact that we'll have WPSL, two WPSL teams have an NPSL team, obviously the USL championship and then a USPL franchise. And some people might say, well, there's too many franchises, too much going on here for this for the Pittsburgh soccer fan. But the other side of that is the opportunities that are there for, for this game to grow in our area. So I think that's that's how I see this is definitely the glass half full uh, at look at it. So I, I know it's kind of the wrap this interview up. I've gone on this little bit of a tangent here, but just, just oh, I appreciate kind of your thoughts you. on, on what your franchise really represents to this really growing um, soccer market here. Yeah, um, we are as as modern as our perspective may be because it's different. We always try to uh, attribute um, different with modern. It's actually quite traditional. Uh, it, it It's more connective to a traditional aspect. I think that traditional aspect of soccer and the fan is that neighborhood connective experience. And, right. you know, it's tough being in an area where the sport may be the fourth. I would argue that it's probably closer to, to the fourth or maybe the third with our younger audience because you know, how many uh, people are playing, young people are playing soccer now. Um, but that's the soccer fan. The connection with the healthcare workers um, is what dif differentiates us. And um, what we're doing right off the bat means that we don't have to try to recreate and, and you know try to reach or reconnect. We literally come in with a foundation establishing our fans and the people who are doing this as our primary focus and objective. And soccer fans, I, I believe in the city of Pittsburgh, which I'm sure there's a lot of healthcare workers involved with that, will see that. They deserve, a, they deserve a competitive team. They deserve to have a Scotland premiership, you know, uh, manager who was, you know, had uh, the success and just an interesting career. I mean, we're getting Coach Smith on his prime. We're getting Nicola Martini um, you know, who's done intermediary, the intermediary and scout uh, scouting work for some of the biggest clubs in Italy. Um, but he's relatively young. I mean, we're getting these people at the right time um, for an objective that obviously goes a lot farther beyond this season. I think the soccer fan deserves that. Soccer fan deserves to see an effort and we'll never have to change uh, what we're doing to reach the healthcare audience or the neutral soccer fan. Um, we just need to adhere to what we've established so far and, and what our foundational principles are. Um, that's, that's who we are. So we, you know, I did, I mentioned winning is not everything. Uh, the irony is winning isn't everything does not mean that we didn't care about winning. I just did not want the focus of our first press conference to be about, you know, our, fo our, our focus on winning a U.S. Open. I mean, do you want to change the world? It's really simple. You win a U.S. Open. Uh, what, what's a step closer to getting us open? You hire one of the, one of the best in his prime, uh, managers who has the ability, when I say best managers, it's not always the record, but yeah, it's not a very strong record, but 
it's the connection with players. I mean, you come in and you have a coach who, uh, who played 500 games at the highest level was in the hall of fame at Dundee FC. Um, you know, you see a, a scout that has scouted players, you know, with, for every major club and you feel that that opportunity is there. Um, you know, and as a fan, again, um, you connect with the fact that we are focusing on us open and people might snicker and laugh and all that stuff. And John, you have a right to, I, you know, I have a couple, a couple times, uh, myself, um, just thinking about the fact that, you know, we set this goal and the fact that I think we actually have a conversation in six months or a year, um, to say that we could make a run. You know, I don't know what's different between our team and the UPSL team in 2018. I think it was 2019. Uh, I think it was might have been 2018 or 2019. They went to the quarterfinals, lost LA Galaxy by one goal. Um, I would argue our roster now uh, would would take that team to the pitch, you know, and uh, and be competitive. So um, it's not as much delusion of grandeur as is what's the primary objective. One one helps the other, and that one is competition. And if we win, you know, and the other is community and trust. As long as we have that community and trust, and as long as we adhere to our principles, we're going to get the players and we're going to get the coaches to win and win a championship. So why not reach for the top? Well, I think that's exactly it. You're setting a bar high and I think we'll be uh, watching with great interest and I can't wait Thank to you. see how things uh, pan out. I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of work. Um, yes. As you've said, you've been spending a lot of time on the phone and talking to players and, you know, procuring you know having additional you know, funds and all that fun stuff sponsorship yeah. it's pretty surreal it's it's pretty surreal yeah i uh one thing i would tell you too is it's funny we've probably had to pull back and reassess our sponsorships uh six or seven times through this process because the organization and you know from a business perspective equity of our organization is just increasing almost daily with every player that comes in with every manager you know, or in this case with Coach Smith, I mean, you know, we, we now had to reassess at a very early stage. That requires an astronomical amount of work. I mean, Krusha Jazi on our sponsorship development uh, team has been incredible. And, uh, and he's, he's a dear friend um, who has had a lot of experience working with me on, in film and our productions uh, with Wonder Lab. So he's been fantastic. Our COO, Tybiro, has been fantastic. You know, it just takes a lot of work and effort. There, there really isn't enough hours in the day. But at the same time, hey, in the end, John, your excitement and the fans' excitement, I mean, that's, that's what we need to make this grow. You know, and that's, that's what we need to adhere to this, you know, this organization and the momentum of the organization. So, that's Well, it. like I said, looking forward to it. There's going to be more news to come. I know you and I have discussed this and uh, Pittsburgh Soccer well, Now will be there to share that news and who knows, uh, break some news every now and then when um, the announcements come, I uh, would tell everybody to make sure that they pay close attention to um, our social media platforms and our channels as well. But again, it's Pittsburgh City United FC, uh, a new member of the UPSL, which is the United Premier Soccer League. And uh, it's season apparently will be kicking off in late August and uh, just a lot of excitement. So again, uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I really appreciate it and uh, looking forward to everything that's, that's going to be coming down the pike. Oh, thank you, John. And it, it, it's an honor, uh, your commitment to the city and Pittsburgh. And uh, when it comes to soccer uh, is, is pretty incredible and it's inspiring as a fellow soccer fan for the fourth most popular sport in the city. I just want to tell you that you've done, you've done an amazing job. It takes a lot of commitment. So thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. And thanks again for, uh, for being part of this and we'll be, uh, we'll be, be talking to you soon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right. Talk to you.